Hey everyone, and welcome to day 11 of Admin Code 2022, Monkey in the Middle. In this video, I'll be explaining my solutions to today's puzzles. You'll get to see my thought process as well as my code. If you want to check out uh, my code, it's going to be in a GitHub repository, which is linked to in the description. So be sure to check that out if you want to see the details. So there's going to be a quick time lapse of myself solving the puzzles. But before that, um, I just want to say sorry that this video is a little bit late. I had an event last night which prevented me from making the video, which means um, I'm pretty behind on today's leaderboard. Let's look at my personal stats. Yeah, I am in the 10,000s range. So actually, a lot of people are doing these puzzles, which makes me happy. I didn't know that tens of thousands of people were doing this. Today's puzzles took me about like an hour in total, maybe a bit less to solve. So they are a bit more complicated, but um, you'll get to see all my explanations. So let's dive into the time lapse. Okay, so today's puzzles were a bit, um, I, I'll say annoying. Um, they were a bit complicated, and part two in particular brought up some challenges. But let's take a look at how I solved them. But I mean, first of all, let's explain the puzzles. So today, we have a bunch of monkeys that are taking our items, and each monkey starts out with some number of our items, um, and they pass around the items in according to some rules. And basically, we're asked to find, we're asked to simulate this and find the number of times that each monkey touches our items. So basically, how this works is each monkey starts out with a number of our items, and there is a level of worry associated with each item, which is an integer, which describes how much we worry about these items. The monkeys then look at the items, they apply an operation to the amount of worry. Um, that we have for their first item. They do a test. Um, this is all like divisible by some number. That's the pattern um, in these inputs. Um, and then according to if that test is satisfied, it passes those items to other monkeys. So all the monkeys take turns doing this, or rather monkey zero does this for all their items, then monkey one, then monkey two, then three. Um, and then afterwards, all the items have shuffled around and they repeat again and they do this 20 times. So that's part one. It might take a bit to um, parse through all of the input, sorry, the puzzle, um, the description of the puzzle. So do feel free to read this for a bit longer if you need um, more time to process. So this part was really just an exercise in implementation. So how I did this was, well, let's just talk about a few key points. You're going to get to see my code as a reminder in the repository, which is linked to in the description. So do check out my code for the details. But there's just a lot of like parsing and simulation detail work here, not a whole lot of like clever data structures or anything. So reading the input is <clears throat> arguably the most difficult part for part one. Uh, what I did was I first took the input, I split it by double new lines. So we get these blocks which describe each monkey. There's not that many monkeys, there's only eight monkeys, but we can still automate this just to make it maybe a little bit easier to swap between sample input and actual input. And also this just makes things like more generalizable to all inputs. So what I did first split up by blocks to get these strings, um, double new lines. And then for each of those, we're going to parse the monkey. So that's the for loop over here. Um, before I do that, though, I should say I created a class. This is Python um, syntax. We make a class which describes each monkey. Object oriented programming does come in handy sometimes, even though I don't usually use it. Um, each monkey has a number of attributes. They have um, a list which describes the current items they have. And these are just integers because the items are distinguished by their level of worry. Then they also have this operation attribute, which is a string, which is just going to extract um, these parts. So like old plus seven, the literal string, or rather um, a list containing each of those parts separated by spaces is going to be contained in that operation attribute. Um, and then we're going to have the test, um, which is going to describe the modulo, which they're going to test for divisibility by, as well as the uh, monkeys that they're going to pass to if it's satisfied or not. And then finally, this attribute uh, to extract the answer is going to be the number of inspections that the monkey has done so far. Okay, so to parse each monkey, we're going to loop through all of those blocks. We're going to split up each block by strings to get all of the lines. Um, and then there's three things we need to extract. We need to extract the items that the monkey starts with, the operation that the monkey does, and the test that they test for. So first of all, to extract items, there's this uh, complicated one line extraction. I'll go through each of the parts. So we take the line, um, the first line, or rather index one, inside the block that, descri that describes this current monkey. Um, take line one, go two characters over to ignore this indent, um, and then we just have this string. So that's lines one, two, colon. 
Uh, we split, split it up by spaces, but only allow two splits so that we get rid of this space as well as this space. Um, and then we're going to have three items inside this list, which is returned by the splits. It's going to be starting, items, colon, and then this string. And that string is really what we care about. So we can take that string, split it up by comma space, and that's going to give us a list of strings, which describe the worry levels of the items that this monkey currently has. We take uh, that list because it's currently strings and we just map it to an integer, or rather we map each item to an integer because it's currently strings, and then we just turn that into a list. And now we have a list of all the items um, that this monkey has. Okay, next we need to find the operation. The operation is pretty easy to extract. It's sort of the same idea. We take line two instead of line one, and then we just split it up by spaces at most three times. So that's gonna get rid of this space, this space, and this space. And what we're left is, with is this expression, split it up by spaces again, and that's going to be the operation that describes um, how the monkey manipulates the worry level of each item it comes across. So you might be wondering, how are we going to use this operation? Well, we're gonna have a helper function up here called exp which um, is short for expression. I don't know if that's good variable naming, that's just what came to mind first. Um, so how we parse a given operation, which is going to be a list containing old, comma, um, plus, comma, seven, all of them are going to be strings. How do we turn this into an actual thing that we can do to a worry level to get a new worry level? Well, first <clears throat> it's going to, well, we're gonna take this operation and we're gonna apply it to X, which is like the old value. Um, so what we do <clears throat> is we take the left right operation and right so left is going to be in this case old op is going to be plus sign and right is going to be seven as a string um we're going to assume that the left um string in this is old that's just something we can assume um and then we split into cases based on if it's plus or if it's multiply if it's plus then we can just return um you know x plus the right value pretty simple if it's multiply then we multiply x by whatever whatever's on the right sometimes it's squaring so you multiply x by itself um as is uh, the case with monkey six in my inputs, or you might multiply by constant, which we can just do here. So basically testing if the right is a variable or a constant, and we just apply that to X. So yeah, this function takes in a string that describes the monkey's operation and applies it to a given input. I tried to do this first by just using the, what, like what you might think of first, which is creating a function for each monkey that just like takes an input X and then spits out an output and create a unique function for each monkey. But that didn't work in Python for some reason, references something um, passed by reference. So this was just easier uh, to take a string and treat that as an operation and then use this helper function. So after we have parsed the operation, we now need to extract the test, which is basically the same idea. Um, we split up by spaces and then we take the last element, turn it into an integer, and that's going to be the number we're looking for. So um, line three is going to contain our mod. Line four is going to contain the monkey we pass to if the divisibility test is true. And line five contains the number if the divisibility test is false of the monkey that we want to pass to. Um, and finally, we just turn this into a monkey object, which accepts items, operation, and test. And we just put it into it. Um, test is going to be a list of three elements, which is the mod, um, the monkey pass to if true, and the monkey pass to if false, um, if the test is satisfied or not. Okay, so now we have a list of monkeys, which describes like all the monkeys and their tests and their operations and their starting items. And now we just need to simulate 20 rounds. So 20 rounds, go through all the monkeys, um, loop from I to loop I from zero to N, not including N, where N is the number of monkeys. For each monkey, um, just convenience variable monkey here. We change the worry level. Um, actually, first, we're going to iterate through all the items that this monkey has. So let's take a look at monkey five, for example. They're going to have 57, 69, 63, etc. Loop through all those items in order. First of all, take the worry level, change it based on that monkey's um, operation. So you can see the function, the helper function in action here. We take the monkey's operation, which again is that list of strings, and apply it to the current item to change the item's worry value. And then we divide it by three and round down. In Python, that is the double slash um, just for integer div division. Uh, so we change the worry level of the item and then we divide it by three after realizing that the monkey hasn't damaged it. Uh, and then we do the test. So we have our modulus, we have the monkey to pass to if the visibility test is true and the monkey to pass to if it's false. Um, you know, we just test for divisibility. If it's true, then we pass it to the if true monkey. If it's false, then we pass it to the if false monkey. So notice to pass an item, all we have to do is go to that monkey, um, take their items, the attribute, and append the current item to the end. 
After that, um, we need to make sure to increment the variable, which describes the number of inspections that this monkey does. So just incrementing that by one. And then at the end, we empty the list of uh, items that this current monkey has because they've inspected all of them and now have passed all of them to the other monkeys. Okay, so that's just simulating all of the passing around. It took a while to implement, even though it's a pretty straightforward like implementation. Um, it requires many moving parts, and this took a while to write. So it's not too hard to explain and understand, but code is difficult. Uh, so finally, at the end, we now have all the monkey objects with their inspect attribute, inspections attribute containing how many inspections they did. We create a list um, of all those inspections using list comprehension. Python is very cool. Uh, we sort that and take the top two elements, multiply them together to get the monkey business. Um, that's what the pa uh, puzzle asks for. So I like this alliteration um, of the prompt. What is the level of monkey business after 20 rounds of stuff slinging see man? Uh, Simeon, sorry, it's not a very familiar word, um, shenanigans. So we multiply together the top two number of inspections that have been done by any given monkey um, to get our answer. So that's part one. Uh, let's move on to part two. So for part two, uh, we begin to get worried that we will never get our items back. So after seeing that a monkey has not damaged our item, we do not divide the worry level by three and round it down. Um, it just continues rising forever. So the Puzzle even acknowledges um, this relief um, is keeping worry levels from reaching ridiculous levels. So the worry levels are going to get pretty big. And also, we have to run this for 10,000 rounds instead of 20 rounds, which is a lot, but it's still doable. So the trick here is I tried to do this directly, just changing this 20 to 10,000 and removing the divide by three line. But that was taking a while, even in Python, which has unlimited integer sizes. So the unfortunate thing is that I actually went to the subreddit this morning and I saw this meme. Um, which talks about no funny modular business needed. And that sort of provided the inspiration to me to actually uh, use like modular arithmetic to keep the worry levels manageable. So um, I'm sad that I saw this meme because you know I couldn't I didn't think of the solution entirely by myself, but most of it, I guess, did come from myself. Um, so let's take a look at how that's done. So the key thing to know is that all of these operations, um, when they are done, like can be thought of as operations within the like modulo space mod some amount. I don't know. Um, all these operations basically can be carried into modular arithmetic, which is something that you should look up if you're not familiar with. But basically the idea is that after a monkey has inspected an item, we don't have to keep that original amount. All we care about um, for logic is if it's divisible by a certain modulus. Um, in this case, we have 19, 5, 11, 17, 7, 13, 3, and 2. Notice how all of these are prime numbers. So what we can do is we could multiply all of these divisibility test numbers by each other, and then we get a big number. Um, and after all of the monkeys have inspected our items, uh, or after as, as each monkey has inspected an item, we can simply take it mod that giant product, and that's going to keep all our logic the same. Now, the thinking behind this is we only care about if it's zero mod this number. So basically, if it leaves a remainder of zero, um, when divided by like say 19 or 5 or 11 and if we take um, everything mod if we operate within mod this big product nothing is going to change about that because math that's not a very satisfying explanation um, but that's sort of the logic behind it all we have to do is just keep track of all the worry levels um, and their remainders <clears throat> only their remainders um, when divided by this big product of all of the uh, divisibility moduli so they are all prime which is a big hint um, we can simply multiply them together to get the like modulus that we should operate within. What this means practically for our code is that uh, I called this thing big mod. That's my variable name, very good variable naming conventions. Um, go through all the monkeys and just multiply <clears throat> them together, all of these divisibility test numbers to get big mod. And now we're just gonna do everything <clears throat> um, modulo big mod. All of, after monkey has inspected an item and changed <clears throat> its value, we're just going to take it mod this big mod. It's also convenient that we no longer have to divide by three because div like dividing by three does not get preserved within modular arithmetic, um, especially the rounding down part. So actually grateful that our um, like numbers do not get rounded down. Okay. Yeah, that was a bit, um, that was a bit tiring. This puzzle took like an hour for me to solve, which is uh, quite a while. But I hope these explanations helped clarify some things for you, whether it be whether it be um, the actual description of the puzzle itself or just how to implement it in code. So I did talk through it in detail, um, but reminder again, you can see my code 
Uh, it's in the description. Check out that link. And yeah, that's pretty much it for day 11. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave it down below. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 12. Thanks for watching.